I'm so fortunate I'm drinking one of my favourite waters at the moment. It is so delicious. And this really is my introduction to water because most people don't hydrate enough. They don't drink enough water. And the reason why is because they don't like the taste of what comes out of their tap. And the reason why I don't like the taste of what comes out of their tap is because it's, it's been adulterated. It's had things done to it. And I'm very grateful to this guy, Daniel, who created the findaspring.com website because he created a new terminology for me about water. He said, there's such a thing as processed water. Now we think about it, if we're concerned about our health, we all know that processed food is not the best and that fresh food is the best. So it kind of stands to reason that it must be a similar story with the water, that if you're drinking processed water, that's less than ideal. Even if it's filtered, even if it's filtered through reverse osmosis, it can't be as good as the stuff that comes out of the ground, which is the spring water, which I so love. So let's go into a lot more detail than I normally do about water and hydration. Now here's a funny thing, you see, over 75% of the population, certainly in Britain, are chronically dehydrated. And the figures tested upon people who are suffering from dehydration is that the body contains at least 70% water. Now what used to exercise my imagination and used to cause me to go, uh, is if you really do some research on this, you'll find that some studies say in excess of 90%. How can there be a variation as great as 20% about the human composition? How could it be as, be as little as 70% and as much as more than 90%? Well, I've given you the answer already. Of course, if your sample population is dehydrated, it can have a lower figure. And if you're a well-hydrated human being, you can have a higher figure. And this is a thing to remember, as all life on planet Earth originated from the sea. So we all originate from water. Water, in the sense, is our earthly mother. That's what we've all evolved from, creatures that lived in water. So it makes such obvious sense that water is very, very important to us. Now there's a guy who's written this book, and there's a cue for the book. And I have such a difficulty in pronouncing his name, but I think it's Batman Levi. And he is a medical doctor, and his title, as you can see, it's called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. Yes, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. So his take, his thesis on the whole water thing is that there are people walking around by the millions on a daily basis whose bodies are basically shrieking at the top of their voices saying, give me more, give me more, give me more. That's what they're asking for. And what's happened to that person, that person has become inured to the voice. And it's the same as you've got a little child constantly hassling you. After a while, you start to lose interest because the child's always hassling you. You just think, oh, well, yeah, the child's always hassling me. It's the same thing as the human body. So we can become deaf to the cries of the human body asking for what it needs. And that's an important thing to take on board. So the first thing I would say is a lot of dehydration is caused by the fact that the water has been processed. If you can get your hands on some unprocessed water, you will automatically find yourself drinking more. And I'm particularly reminded about the wonderful family I went to stay with in Washington State last year. I asked them about spring water, and they said they could go and get melt water from Mount Baker. And I looked at this mountain, and it's covered in snow. And this was like in May and June, covered in snow. And you can go get the melt water. That just sounds so amazing, wonderful. So I says, I suppose you go very regularly. No, we hardly ever go, because the trouble is, every time we go, we get all this water and it gets drunk so quickly, we think, oh, just too much trouble. So I thought, well, that really tells the story, doesn't it? If the water gets drunk quickly, it must be a good sign. It's rather like when you make homemade bread, it's just so much better tasting. So this is one really big reason why people don't drink so much water. Another reason is habituation and drinking drinks which dehydrate the body. And there's a quality of the human body which is called the homeostatic mechanism. Now the homeostatic mechanism is quite remarkable because what it does is it tends to create a body which desires to stay the same. Now if you're living in optimal health conditions, this is your best friend, your homeostatic mechanism, because it means to say as soon as I don't drink as much water as I like to, I start to feel a bit like, hmm, I'm not really feeling very tip-top condition here. I could do with doing something about it. So that's when the homeostatic mechanism works well when you go away from your helpful optimum. But imagine your optimum is really poor. Imagine you're used to, say, consuming entirely microwave meals 
and you never drink any water then for that body to be offered water would actually be a shock because the homeostatic mechanism would not recognize it so this important factor of the body which is to keep going the same old way it can be an advantage but if you've been on a track that's not been very helpful for you it can be a real problem and so here's my special recommendation to people who literally find that they can't do this this is beyond what they can do I've met them, I've had conversations with them, and this is what I suggest you do. You get your pint glass and you put a teaspoon of sugar and you put a pinch of salt, preferably Himalayan salt, and you stir it up and then you drink. And if you need to, you can even make it warm so it's blood heat. If you warm it up a bit, that makes it even more palatable. And this is a way to get a body which is completely alienated from fresh, good quality water into a way of being able to receive it because this might sound strange but there are even examples of people who have never been given decent quality water and the first thing they do is they drink a lot of it and they purge it up the body can't cope with something so wonderful and so pure so there's quite a big subject and let's take it all the way the alcoholic or the heroin addict knows about the homeostatic mechanism because they know that their body is designed to keep the levels of these substances about the same at all times and that's why they have the desire for the next fix or the next bottle of whiskey or whatever it may be so it's a very powerful human mechanism and when you can literally inveil your body into lots of really healthy habits it will keep you there and if you find yourself with a lot of unhealthy habits it'll tend to keep you there too so it's a bit of a double-edged sword that one Okay, so let's go into a bit more detail about water. The thing is, the body has got so many metabolic processes which all only function properly with enough water. Let me give you a simple example. We all have a brain and a nervous system. When the levels of water drop in the body, it literally means that brain function and all nervous function starts to go down the toilet, literally. They start to diminish and diminish until you get poor intelligence, poor memory, poor concentration. And you can even come up with nervous disorders. In fact, what the guy who wrote the book, Your Body's Money Cries for Water, and I will just mention that I just messed around a bit on the internet, put the title in, you can download most of the book, not all of it, but a fairly fair amount of it for free. So for goodness sakes, this is something to explore if you're interested. He gives chapter and verse on all sorts of really nasty health conditions, diseases like heart disease, cancer, arthritis, digestive disorders, immune disorders, the list goes on. And his story is every single one of these conditions is improved through the consumption of water. And I say a big thanks to my former wife, Cinder, because I remember that Cinder, who had cancer, that was something she found very difficult to do, was to drink water. It was a symptom of her condition, if you like. So these, these qualities are really connected. So a, a body that finds it really hard to take in the water is a body which is going to be very out of balance and very prone to disease. And when you can literally carefully, with time, override that hemostatic mechanism and get it used to being able to drink what your body needs and my golden key is find the best quality you can because it's likely to taste nice and if it tastes nice that's it and I'll just give a bit more detail about myself which is that I had a chronic infection of the gut which lasted for nearly 18 months and I'm still coming to the end of my cure phase and my recovery phase which is wonderful and I notice all sorts of things from having had that particular thing. One thing I was aware of straight away is that literally the reason I survived it so very very well is because I kept my levels of hydration up but I noticed in the last six weeks before I started to, well before I got the diagnosis and began the cure, I noticed that even my desire for water as well as my desire for food was starting to diminish which shows that I was becoming seriously ill at that point. So these are really good indicators for us in terms of how we're functioning. So the following drinks all dehydrate the body. That means they literally force water out of the body and leave your body crying out for water. And here's your list. Coffee, decaf coffee, tea, 
all herb teas, yes, all herb teas, no matter how good, they all dehydrate the body massively. Rooibos tea, barley cup, all these alternative heapy drinks, they all dehydrate the body. Fruit juice, all fruit juices dehydrate the body. All carbonated beverages, diet beverages or otherwise, every single one of these drinks dehydrates the body. In other words, there's only one drink which actually hydrates the body. Mind-boggling, isn't it? And I want to show you this little photograph here, which is, I only want water in my water, a mother and child, I think that's a rather nice one. Just give me water in my water, nothing else, thank you. So in terms of practicalities, there's finderspring.com, there's megalithic.com. If you've got your own transport, this is a realistic option. If you haven't, then it's a matter of going to somewhere where you can get the best quality spring water bottle that you can find or to get yourself the best filter you can find. And the thing to remember about filters, if you've had your filter in use for more than a month, that probably means you need to change it. You do need to remember to change these things because the problem is when they get towards the end of their use, they start to discharge the toxins which they've been absorbing in the early part of their process of keeping the water filtered. So it's very important to remember that as well. And just give you lots of love and keep your body hydrated and see how much better you feel. And notice how you retard the aging process and have so much more energy for everything in life. Vitality again. Thank you.